Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is. Once again, we like talking to him once a week. His name is Steve Kravitz. He's a comedian, well, in absentia. <laughs> yeah. When's the last time he actually stood on the stage and did comedy? Mm. February 2020. February 2020, and that was it. Yep. And and how do you feel about that? Are you bothered by it? Yeah, I'd like to be working. Yeah, and it isn't even a matter of working. It's a matter of exercising. That's right. You know, oops, because people don't understand. Oops, there goes you. <laughs> I got rid of it. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, people don't understand, but it's like a muscle. Right, you know, and, absolutely. And if you don't, if you don't exercise it, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work that right. well. I mean, that's right. When you get up, you've probably gotten up after a long period of time of not being on stage. Right. What did that feel like to you? Did you feel rusty? Yes. You feel like you forget stuff. You forget some of the nuances. Yeah, and what? But explain those nuances to the well, audience. You know, a bit has so many pieces to it, and you would forget part of the piece. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I do a thing on Jesus, and I would forget the Mormons. <laughs> I don't know how you could do that, but I would. <laughs> yeah. So, And you start telling a joke, and all of a sudden you'd realize that you had told it all wrong or something like that. Right, yeah. right, right, exactly. You left something out. You kind of feel like the guy at a party who tries to tell everybody a joke but gets it all wrong. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and it's not funny. And uh, then you stand, stand there and uh, look like a carp with your mouth wide open. Right. Uh, you know? Right, 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 right. You need to find a gymnasium where you can work out. Well, there's the, no pressure. Yeah, yeah. And that, they were used to be those gyms. I mean, in San Francisco, it was the Holy City Zoo. That's right. It was this small little club where, I mean, the people were so close to you, they were almost on stage. And That's it, right. It only sat 74. Yeah, yeah. And you could go in there, and you could experiment, and you were kind of the audience expected you to. Right. So, right, right. Yeah, so that was like that was like a gym, okay? And, right. then, and then you went out, and you ran the Olympics or whatever at some club. Right, right, ran the marathon. Yeah, because when you play a place like the Punchline in San Francisco, which was a big comedy club, you had to be really ready to go. You right. Know? You had to be on your A game. That's right. Somebody keeps calling you. Why don't you just pick it up and say you're talking to somebody here? You know? Because there's spam calls. What, is it really? I hate yeah. those. I hate those. You know, when's the government going to? I don't know if they can clamp down on them because I don't. No. I don't know if they even come from the United States. No, and, and if you block the number, they'll just dial from another number. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, they yeah. they have this do not call list that you signed right. up for, and I signed up for it, and they. So did I. Yeah, and uh, they kept calling. They found ways around it. Right, right, you know? right, right. And and what what bothers me greatly about the way they you know the, this problem of 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 these uh, spam calls is that they especially for me there are certain important calls I'm going to get and sometimes right. they're from a doctor or a hospital or whatever some kind right. of not emergency but something I need to know. And then they're calling and somehow it doesn't recognize them as a, a legitimate call, and then I get spam risk up there. But it's really right, my right, doctor right. trying to call. Right, know? right, right, right. So what they're doing is they're really endangering the American public. 
by these by the really? spam. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, how many times do you not call because answer because it says spam, but maybe it is an important call, but it's recognizing it as spam. Right, right. No, I get yeah, you. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. So I mean, that's the problem. Uh, well, that's what voicemail is for. Well, that's what voicemail is for. Well, yeah, yeah. I usually I usually have it go to voicemail, and then I listen to the message, and maybe it's the doctor going, hey, would you please call us? We need to talk to you. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah, you've got cancer. See you later. You know. <laughs> talk to you soon. Yeah. Um, so, uh, hey, you got a haircut. No, I didn't get a haircut. Well, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, my wife, my wife does it. You know, we, we, oh, really? Well, this... We, we, I was starting to get COVID hair, you're right? Right. And I needed some way to get a haircut. And I, I said, well, why don't we just try getting one of these, you know, thingies, these, right. uh, you know. I know what you're talking about. The, 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 you know, the clippers. Yeah, the, the, so, the, the So thingies. I went online to go get them at Amazon and you couldn't find them. Because they were all every they were out of them, because everybody really? was buying them, okay, because of COVID. Right. So I finally I just went. I think I was on the eBay and I bought one on eBay, for the same price I would have gotten it on Amazon, and sure. they were and they were easily available on eBay. So I got one, and then I took the chance and said, okay, wife, do what my barber does you know i'm i don't have a complicated haircut here right 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 right, and she right. Went zip 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 and i went that looks pretty good you know looks great if it doesn't grow out well we can just zip 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 it in another week or two you know sure. and keep me at a uh, at a substantially short length uh, right and so that's how i started getting the haircut uh but i've come to this whole thing i decided in this interview not to wear the cap I like it because for for the longest time, I have been bothered by people who hide their baldness. Okay, I mean, why are you uh, why are you doing this or why are you combing it over or why are oh, you doing uh, it? Well, anyway, a comb over has got to go. Any number of things. Okay, and to, and and then I today thought, well, you know, every time I do the show, I wear a cap. Why am I wearing a cap? There's no reason for me to wear a cap. Right. Right? Except that I want to hide the baldness. So Why do you want to hide it? I finally decide the hell with it, you know. I have Why like, do you want to hide Why do you want to hide it, Alex? You're bald. Well, I mean, I'd also like to have these bags taken care of, you know. What, you going to go have plastic surgery? Well, I have to have my eyes done uh, uh, for medical reasons. I have to have them uh I, I have these drooping lids, and it impedes my v vision a bit, and so they're going to lift them. Okay. Okay. Gonna, okay. Well, while I'm there, uh, if I want to get my these bags out, I can pay another two thousand. I can pay two thousand bucks. It's not covered by insurance, but I'd be doing it at the same time the person would be using the operating room, so it'd only be two thousand dollars. Get rid of the right, bags. Right. Right. So you're going to do it? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Yeah. You know, my feeling is what I get my face done. I'm looking younger, ten, five years younger, or whatever, and then I drop dead. <laughs> you know, so you know, if if this were like ten years ago, maybe I would have thought uh, more seriously about it. But then again, right. I didn't have the bags as badly as I do now. Although they're not right. they're not terrible, are they? No. 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 But they're the one part of my face that bothers me. Yeah. Not well, the, not the nose. No, the only time my nose bothers me is when I see a picture profile. Oh, okay. Turn, turn, turn profile. Let me see what you're talking about. Oh, but that's a great comic nose for crying out loud. Oh yeah, my mom wanted to fix it yeah. when I was in high school, and I said, "No, it's my nose." Yeah, no, no reason to. My nose has gotten, I think, it's gotten fatter as I've gotten older. You know? Mine's gotten crooked. It's gotten crooked. Yeah. What do you mean? It's a, a skew. It's it's a little off to one side. Yeah, you're you're right. It is a little off to one side. Not much, you know. Not much. But then again, you know, as an actor, you're a character actor. What do you want to do? Right. Lose character. Right. You know. Um, 
Are you going to go out for movies again eventually? I hope so. Yeah. Well, how do you how do you do that? I mean, you got to get an agent, right? Right. Right. Um, Which is the hard part. Yeah. Now you had agents before, right? Oh sure. Had other- managers. Had agents. Yeah. Um, and so, could you go back to some of those old agents and say, "Well, they're they're all in California." Oh, okay. Well, yeah, but in this day and age, you know, I mean, people are if if you get a job in California, you're how many hours away from California? Right, six. Six hours. You know, it's it's not like uh, you're not available. Right, 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 yeah. right. I mean, the only problem is you might have to fly in for an audition. And that's it would have to be a major part to fly in for an audition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It couldn't be like one scene. It would have to be multiple scenes. But then again, there are a lot of films being made in New York. And in Boston. And in Boston, yeah. So, I mean, you know, it, 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 it's not like the old days where you had to be in Hollywood. I got to go to Hollywood. That's, that's where the right. business is. I mean, guys in San Francisco, the comedians in San Francisco, eventually were moving down to L.A. so they could get TV work and movie work. That's right. That's right. San Francisco is where you learn the craft, and once you learn the craft and you were a seasoned comic, then you would go to L.A. Yeah, yeah. And the Boston comics would go to New York. Exactly, yeah. You know? Although at one point there wasn't a lot of work in New York. At, right. At one point, it was all pretty much California TV, movies, commercials, know, commercials, all of that. The commercials aren't even. I, I I wanted to do voiceovers, okay, and right. so I asked a friend of mine who who does them, uh, who work with me at Sirius XM. Uh, what about it? You know, how do I get into this? And he said to me, "You don't." He said, "There's no business right now." Right, and it's a very closed community. Well, it's not that. It's not really that. In the old days, it used to be, I used to go in for a lot of auditions here in New York, okay? And all right. the, all the ad companies were on Madison Avenue, and so all the ads were done in New York. Uh, and so you could go for the auditions here one after the other if you really wanted to. I, sure. always, I always found them a little frustrating because, you know, I'd be sitting there to be, go, okay, well, you're we trying out for this one, right? Yeah, well, here's here's the copy. And you're right. You're in the lobby, right? And you're reading the copy and looking at it and saying, how am I going to do this? And right. all of a sudden you hear off the side of your ear, she says, and your name is, and he goes, Orson Welles. And you go, well, that's it. I'm, I'll, see you, <laughs> I'll see you later. And there are any number of guys who... Got all the work. There was a guy named right. Richard Kyle, who was uh, in, on Broadway and stuff like that, and did move some movies. He was on everything. Really? Oh yeah. So you'd hear him come into an audition. And you go, "I'm no way. I'm getting this." You know? Right. Why did they even ask me? There you go. And then there's that's like. That's like you go to an audition, if you're not wearing a cowboy hat, they don't know why you're there. Well, also in the audition, now this is what gets me in the audition, they're, they're, they're kind of demeaning. Because yes. they, they sit there and they give you the copy and they say, now read the copy, right? And you read the copy. And Thank you very much. We'll let you know. Okay. Well, uh, this one I was doing, um, I walked in. And they handed me the copy. I hadn't seen it in advance. They handed me the copy. And the copy read, uh, what, uh, what, uh, Susie may know a lot about skinny knits, whatever that was. But what she doesn't know is she has ho-hum mouth. What the heck? Yeah, well, I started to read this. and I, I bet. Uh, huh? I bet. I started to read this. As I was instructed to do, Mr. Bennett, start reading it. And I go, Susie may know a lot about skinny knits, but what she doesn't know is she has a whole her mouth. And I started breaking up laughing. And they said, is there a problem, Mr. Bennett? No, uh, let me try it again. Uh, she knows a lot about skinny knits, but what she doesn't know is she has a <laughs> And every time I hit the line, I start breaking up. And finally, after about the third time, they said, is there a problem, Mr. Bennett? And I said, yeah, this is the biggest piece of crap I've ever had to read in my life. 
<laughs> and they said, thank you very much. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and because they, they're the ones who wrote it. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. They were insulted by it. But then right. the other problem was is that sometimes I would be asked to go to an audition, and it was just a bunch of women who were holding the auditions who wanted to see what Alex Bennett looked like. Really? Yeah. So I would go in, and they were they were there just to see who I was, what I looked like. They didn't care whether I got the job or not. Never got a job off of any of these auditions. I'm a lousy auditioner. The only time I ever got a voice on anything was because I knew somebody, and they were doing the job, and they said, you want to come in and do the voice. Right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. But, I mean... Um, uh, but you know, uh, vo but voiceovers aren't isn't an area you really you, you ever went out for, right? No, not at all. Although I did do a radio commercial for McDonald's did years you? ago. Really? Yeah. And what, and what did what did you say? It was something about a cheeseburger. Nothing about skinny knits. No, no, nothing about ho hum mouth. Yeah, whoever came up with that term ho hum bounce should have been shot. Yeah, and what exactly does that mean? Yeah, well, I was always a big guy in... I could have gone into advertising. At one point in my career, I was writing a lot of copy for a radio station in one of the major agencies. I think it was J. Walter Thompson out of San Francisco wanted me to come to work for them. Oh, really? Yeah, and I thought about it, and then I finally I said no. And they said, well, why? I said, it, it, for me, it's too easy. Right. I can write copy in my sleep. You know, I can come up with slogans for ads, in, in, again, in my sleep. I said, it's just too easy for me. I want to stay in radio. It's hard. Right. You know? And so I never went into advertising, but I always had an advertising sense. So when I would go in and read something, he knows a lot about skinny knits, but what she doesn't know is she has ho-hum mouth, and I laugh. I'm laughing because I know this is the shittiest piece of... I would have never written something like this. Right, 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 right. And how did it get greenlit? Well, they just... Because it, 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 an agency agencies never were bright, okay? It, it was everybody trying to act like they were bright. But, sure. there were other, but there were other people that knew better, you know? Right. It's kind of like the director who's so welled up in his own ego. You know this because you're an actor, right? Right. So welled up in his own ego that he doesn't trust the actor and their right. judgment. Right, you know? right. Or the, or the actor you're playing uh, a scene with is all welled up in their ego. Like when I did Nash Bridges with... Um, What's his name? Johnson. Don Johnson, yeah. Don Johnson. I mean, there was one one day where we shot a scene and he kept accusing me of jumping lines, of padding my lines, and then he went back and looked at the script and I apologized because I was doing the lines exactly as written. <laughs> was he kind of an asshole to work with? Yes. Oh, In fact, okay. it, it was the only one Listen to this. I'm shooting this long scene. It's a long shot. Yeah. You know, usually you do just a few lines and then you move on. Mm -hmm. This was a long, steady cam shot up through the barge and up the stairs. And halfway up the stairs, I blew the line. And this is after I've been yelled at like three or four times for padding lines and whatnot. And I blew the line and I threw the script up in the air and I went, fuck this, fuck everything, fuck you, fuck all of it, goodbye. I'm done. And then all of a sudden, Don was a nice guy, put his arm around me and said, come on, we'll do this. We'll get this in one shot. Okay. And, yeah. we, and we did. Mm -hmm. And we did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you, you learned how to tame Don Johnson by just getting mad. By getting really angry. Yeah, yeah. That's like a, in another scene, I was supposed to, uh, this guy gets shot. And I'm a lawyer, but he, like, got shot robbing me. So I go into the hospital room and I'm supposed to jump up on the bed and punch him in the face. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, uh, I'm not going to punch anybody in the face. So I throw a stage punch. And Johnson doesn't believe it. He says, look, if I don't buy it, nobody's going to buy it. So instead what I did was he was shot in the shoulder. So instead of hitting him in the face, 
I hit him in the bullet wound. Uh huh. And I hit him hard. Yeah. And then they pulled me off, and I got a bloody nose. And Johnson was thrilled with the whole scene. Wow, wow! But he really wanted you to punch him in the nose. Punch him in the face. But you don't do that in movies. No, you don't. That's why they call them movies. That's why it's called acting. You, you, That's like I was doing a movie with this one guy, and in the scene he's supposed to be drunk. So he shows up drunk. <laughs> I, and I said to him, if you were supposed to be shot, would you show up shot? I mean, what are you doing? This is so unprofessional of you. And he, you know, just in his little stupor said, Bleh. I'm the star of the film. Shut up. Yeah, well, I I'm came in drunk because I'm a method actor. Right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. I shot myself in the leg because I'm a method actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, but, you know, and I imagine you're pretty easy to work with as an actor. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're not, you know, you're not temperamental. You did get temperamental at one time. But, right, but basically, I mean, I'm sure there weren't directors who said, "Don't hire this guy; he's a pain in the ass." You know. No, I usually got hired back. Yeah, right. I was very fortunate. Did you? Have, did you do only one Nash Bridges though? No, I did. I was a recurring character. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. How, so, how many episodes would you say you did of Nash Bridges? I could look it up. You know. I don't know, six, eight, yeah. something like that. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I just, you know, I mean, you you actually had a very good movie career going for you, a television yes. career. I mean, you were, yes. you were getting the job. So what happened? Drugs? Yes. When I shot the series in 1999, that was probably the peak of my drug use. What, what series was that? It's called Black Scorpion on huh. Sci-Fi. Yeah, okay. And... I was horrible in it. It was a horrible show. Uh -huh. It was horribly written. Yeah. It was horribly directed. And I was even worse. Wow. I was terrible. Yeah. I was unwatchable. So it, it, so that is when you, is that when you kind of got out of acting? Or I mean, right. how, it, it, so it was your decision not to seek any more jobs for the time. Right. Period. And then, uh, Rob Schneider came to me and, and offered me a, uh, a part, and then I did another film with Rob. I did two with Rob that he offered me parts for. Which were they uh, again? Uh, there was uh, the the animal. The animal, yeah. And the hot chick. And the hot chick. Okay. So, uh, and Bob, my friend Bob Rubin, is was in what the animal. That's right. Yeah. In fact, it, what's nice about Schneider is he hired a lot of people he knew. Right and shared right, his, right, shared right, his right. good fortune with other people, which I always Sometimes. always thought was very nice. Um, That's like the, the more the more successful Kevin Pollock got, the nicer he became. Yes, well, it, I always tell uh, the story about Kevin Pollock that he was um, he had a kind of a character he did, which was a uh, brash kind of like walk into a room and go, oh no, don't stand up. You know, that kind right. of guy. That kind of guy. Right. And after a while, he got to believe that character. You know, he, he started becoming the character that he, that he, that he created. Right. And it was terrible. He was a horrible guy to hang right. around. And all of a sudden, he, I don't know what it was, but all of a sudden, he got humble. Right. You know, right. all right. of a sudden, right. he got decent. And I think maybe it was confidence. That he was starting to get enough jobs that he had confidence. That he didn't need to play right. that character any longer, and he became a very nice guy. You know, right? Very nice. The more successful he became, the nicer he became. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's usually just the opposite. Yes, but but some people lack confidence, and that's the reason they are the way they are. And then when they finally have confidence, they they you know they're fine. You know, right? So it's terrific. Hey, listen, uh, looks like we're kind of running out of time here. But uh, what's your week like? What's your, the next week going to be like for you? Well, I'm going to get my hair cut off, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's and it. that's about it. Yeah, yeah. We're going out to an anniversary dinner tonight. Oh, you are? Yes. Yeah, our anniversary was about a month ago, <clears throat> but we didn't go because of COVID. 
now the restaurants have opened, so he decided to go to our right, favorite right. restaurant. Right, right. And you've had both your shots. Oh, yeah, I've had both my shots. And, yeah, me too. Uh, you know, and I'm getting my, my shot for distemper and things like that. I'm, uh -huh. getting, all the, I'm uh -huh. getting all the animal shots, too. Hey, right. might, might as well. Can we talk to you next week? Yes, sir. I would love to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is, Steve Kravitz. Bye, Steve. Bye, Alex. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, 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 Steve Kravitz. So let me turn on the lights here so you can see me. Here. How are you? Uh, we're, we're waiting for people to call. We have some people waiting, but not a lot. Boy, you really, you guys really uh, got me uh, figured out here. Yeah. Uh, we won't call Alex till the interview's over with because the interview will go on forever. Yeah, but I like my interviews. I, I enjoy those. I don't know if anybody else does, but at this point, you know, with the kind of uh, lack of, uh, of, uh, of uh, audience that we have on these shows, I do it for me. <laughs> okay? Anyway, uh, so... Um, yeah, a lot of you are probably wondering why I am not wearing a cap tonight. Uh, it's because of a terrible rash on my head. No, it, it, uh, I, I, you know, a while back, I, uh, I used to be mad at people when I looked at them, and they were, they were doing this, uh, uh, you know, wearing, doing stuff to cover up their hair, like bad hair pieces are one of them. Another one is the dreaded comb over. God, I they're disgusting. They're worse than hair pieces. And the other one was that people always wore hats, you know. And I went, why do they wear hats? Oh, they think they're they're hiding their baldness, huh? And I used to laugh at that. And then I then it turned out that I was wearing a hat all the time, and I wondered why. And I said, it's probably to hide the baldness. So I'm not going to anymore. I don't care. I've given up. I just sit in the house wearing jogging pants and do nothing with my life. Anyway, let's talk. We got a bunch of people now, so let me uh, let me just uh, uh, go to them. Here we go. They should be coming in. There they are. Oh, one by one, they they pop up. We got Jeff and we got uh, Scott and we got uh, Trucker Steve and we got Ray Renati and uh charlie wallace is out there lurking somewhere here he comes uh charlie wallace uh, house uh, wearing jogging pants uh, uh, and oh, oh, uh, uh, somebody's got their hey, audio up. we got a bunch of people now. who's got their audio up okay it was ray renati he can't get his picture up he can't get his sound up what what's what's his problem anyway hello everybody how are you this <laughs> evening yeah i noticed you said only 945 hey. dead people huh Charlie? Yep, still under a thousand. Still under a thousand. Is this a little higher than yesterday or lower? Yeah, it's a couple hundred more than yesterday. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Um, well, are you a little mad of the fact that your governor uh, made a mandate that people didn't have to wear uh, masks, and since he did that, the infection rate has gone down? Or is that is that a bad statistic? No. How do you explain that? I'm not mad whenever it goes down. I wish it would go down. But I don't do. I just don't know that I believe them. Yeah, you think they're lying about the numbers? Yeah, I think they're lying about it. Oh boy, who do they think they are? Cuomo? <laughs> Gee, now I'm making Cuomo jokes. <laughs> you know, but what the hell? You know, it's true. It's true. Um, but, uh, I, uh, I just, uh, it's, but we had, uh, let's see, we have, we're up to 569,361 deaths nationally. Yeah. As, as of seven o'clock central time. Could it be more than that? Or is that a low number? Do you think? I think it's definitely a low number. Yeah. 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 Uh, there, there are, there are a number they know they haven't been able to count. Yeah. People either dying at home. Or yeah, misdiagnosed, yeah. misdiagnosed, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dying, dying at home and never diagnosed. Yeah. Probably an older person, and they just mistook it for something else, you know. Yeah. 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 Well, it's pretty <clears throat> terrible. 
any way you look at it. It's been uh, been horrible, uh, and it's been and disgusting. It still what? It still is. Yeah. It's still going on. Yeah. I mean, I think that Biden has done a pretty good job of getting the uh, the uh, uh, vaccine out there and making sure that gets done. I think if Trump were reelected, we wouldn't be where we are right now. We'd be only oh, no. worse, right? So it's kind of it's kind of it's good. It's good. Uh, you know, it's a good thing. Hello to Robert. How are you this evening, sir? I'm how are you? I am fine. And hello to Tony. Hello. How are you, Tony? I'm, I'm pretty good, actually. I'm all right. What do you mean you're pretty good? You look so happy since your mother died. I know. I told <laughs> you. I'm sleeping like a baby. <laughs> I? I mean, I miss her. But it's, yeah, I miss her. I do. But God, I didn't realize I was up all night. Nobody what says mean? there's a law that you have to miss her. I was going to say, I feel guilty sometimes. Yeah. Alex. I bad? went to a shrink once. I, I, I paid him. Yeah. thousands of dollars because I was depressed because my girlfriend had left me and kind of just put me in a funk that I was having a hard time getting out of. And so we spent months and months working around this. And every time I would go in, he would go in. So how are you doing with the girlfriend thing? And we would talk the girlfriend thing out. That's all we ever talked about. <laughs> and one day I said to him, um, I really have other things to talk about. Because I'm getting a, I'm over, kind of over my girlfriend. You know, it's been a while now, and and I found other pussy. Okay, you know, so I'm I'm not, I'm not being, you know. So I'd like to talk about some other things. He says, "Well, like what?" And I said, "The fact that I don't like my mother." Uh, now this should be the moment that a big. shrink jumps into yeah. the fray like and says, run. "I a home run. I can do yeah. something with this, right?" <laughs> I was thinking of a vacation. You got a couple of vacations. And, and, on and he says to me, nobody says you have to. <laughs> now, he must your, hate his mother, I bet you. Now, how's your girlfriend situation? That was my last <laughs> visit to him. I would imagine all that money is soaked into him. Yeah. And all I got. He had mother issues then? Maybe he didn't like his mother then. No, me. Oh, you. Uh, I, I said, he said, Oh, but he said you don't I have said, to. I said, like, talk about my mother. And he said, what about her? And I said, I don't like her, you know. I, oh. you know, and and his reply was, nobody says you have to. <laughs> that's good. You know, and and um, uh, I guess uh, that's my advice to you. Nobody says you have to have liked her. You know. I mean, yeah. It sounds I mean, like you, it sounds like, it sounds like you always liked your dad better. You know. <laughs> Me, we were wait, 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 before, before you go any further, I think me and my dad you, did do a lot of the old movies. You're right. Maybe we were. Before you go any further, lie down on the couch and we can talk about it. <laughs> can okay. I go over there? Yeah. I'll bring my. I can lie on the couch. She's not there anymore. I'm joking. <laughs> sorry, 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 Tony. Your hour is up. Uh, yeah, your hour I'm, is up. I'll send the check. And to, by the way, it's only you. 50 minutes. You know. Oh. That's right. Yeah. I don't know, Alex. That's a tough decision. Yeah, I think I like them equally on a day. What? My mother did spoil me though, so but my father watched the old movies with me, so I kind of had best of both worlds, and then she would dote over me. Yeah, yeah. I always liked my father better. I always liked him a lot. Yeah, you he, said that. He was, yeah, really, he was really cool, but my mother was a dope. See, it would have yeah. been it, to me. It was a toss up. Who was ever was. Uh, yeah. They both had their pluses for me. And mom was m mom ruined me for a lot of other women. Uh, See, my mother spoiled me. Everything was me. Well, basically because she was such a good fuck. But anyway. Uh, no. <laughs> you want to lay down? Talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I think I Boy, should I can lay down. I got a, I got a laundry list. <laughs> no, I um, wake me up. Um, uh, I uh, what was I? Where was I going with that? I wasn't going with that. <laughs> it just seemed like a funny joke at the time, which seemed to have gone a little awry. Um, Your mother spoiled you. Yeah, no, my mother. Yeah. My mother was cloying. She spo she spoiled me for other women. Okay. Because she was really cloying uh, and 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 smothering, okay. Meaning, like so, what so, she would so, uh, she pick at Yeah. So when somebody, some woman would come along and you know want to hug me a lot, I would oh. kind of I was like this, you know, uh, because my mother oh. was just too too cloying, as it were. So uh, you know, I I I um, you know I, I I I guess I loved her in my own way, but. You know, my father, I really dug. He was hip. He was cool. 
You know, yeah, your dad I, I, I like wish, a really laid back guy. Yeah, I, I wish I wish you could all know my dad. You would yeah, I would have hit it off with him. I bet. Yeah. yeah, he probably had a lot of good stories. He'd really be like, if you had a problem, you probably could talk to him. I well, bet. he was a musician, so he was hip, you know, and he was smart. I always liked his brains. Uh, he he brought out the best in me, you know. So I mean, does does every uh, people here? You've all had both parents, I would imagine, or some I of. Did. Huh? You didn't? What'd you have? One one parent? Just my mother, yeah. I never met my dad. Oh, really? So how how do you... Here, come sit on the oh, couch. That's a good one, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm in the yeah. joke. I think we got raw meat here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was going to say. How you know, do you... what was weird was I, I, never uh-huh. talk, I never could talk to my mom about my father either. I, I, I don't think I ever had a conversation about my father with my mother. It was weird. I don't know. Really? Did, you mind me asking, did he leave or... Uh, I, I, I never really knew. Um, oh. You know, when she died, I found this a, um, a marriage certificate. It wasn't a real marriage license. So, and on my birth certificate, it's he's got my name, oh. but I don't know anything about him. I never. And she never. Well, wait, told wait, me wait, wait, wait. You say I, that, I that, that, you said it was it was you found a marriage certificate, but it wasn't a marriage certificate. What do you mean by that? Well, no, it wasn't like an official license. It was just like this thing you know, a mar- marriage certificate, you know, witnessed by so-and-so. Mm-hmm. And it was literally um, nine months before I was born. So I think it was kind of like, you know, she just said, hey, I got to get married. And he goes, I don't want to get married, you know. And I, I really don't know what the deal was. Yeah, you know? yeah. But how did so, you feel? How did you feel about that? Do you feel, you know, when all the when all I, the kids had dads, you didn't have one or what? Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, the thing was, I, I grew up on this street in Sunnyvale with three families of single mothers raising boys. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I always had these kids that were I was growing up with that didn't have fathers either. Wow. So, yeah, yeah it's kind of weird. Yeah. But. Yeah. How did it that did that up. did that affect you in any way? I mean, later yeah, on. Yeah, sure. Life? I'm sure it did. It fucked me up, you know. But you know, I, I've always I was always close to my mother all all her life, you know. When I, I yeah. never. Uh, you well, know, I she never, you know she raised you and she raised yeah. you as a single mother, and I always had a a, a great deal of fondness for single mothers. Yeah. Because yeah. I appreciated that they gave up a lot of their life to make sure someone else had one. Yeah. And so I've yeah. always been very sympathetic to single mothers. Uh, and I used to date a couple, quite a few single mothers, as a matter of fact. And I, uh, I, I just always, I always, I, uh, there's one especially who I literally, I always told her, you're my hero. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. what she did is she had uh, two kids. Uh, one kid died of cancer Ooh. when he was about 21. But in the meantime, yeah. She didn't really have much of an education, so she went back and got herself a high school diploma, and then she went to UC and got a degree in medicine. You know, wow. I mean, in in uh, in uh, health rather, in, in public health, and, probably no, and, and probably no support from the man, right? What? Yeah, no support. Probably no support from the man. I think the guy was around, but I don't know how much support he gave her. But the yeah. thing is that I that I told her you're my hero. You know the fact that you did this and still raised these kids, so and they both turned out to be terrific. You know they didn't turn out to be one kid was bad and the other one was something else. They were just terrific, and and I she was my hero. She was absolutely my hero. Still is to this very day, you know. Uh, but um, um, everybody else here have two parents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, <clears throat> my, my mom and dad got divorced when I was three. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> and my mom raised me, but she passed away when I was thirteen. Yeah. She had just married a gentleman, and then he adopted me um, when I was thirteen. Oh, okay. But he was gone. He was he left me in the house. He he was gone with his girlfriends and and come by once a month and yell at me for no yard work and then give me you know let's go to the store fill up the basket and then pretty much i raised myself this, this was your stepfather yeah yeah wow so how did that affect you did it make you it, it, you seem like a very self-sufficient person yeah 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 i just know i had to you know do what i had to do to make it so uh, education was really important for me so what? I I, yeah. I wanted to work nonstop because I knew I had I had that money, you know. Well, you know, I I uh, um, I was very very discreet not to have kids, 
And one of the reasons was, and I and now I kind of resent regret not having kids, but uh, the reason I didn't have them is that I took it as a very important job, you know. Mm-hmm. And if you weren't willing to do it a hundred percent, then you didn't do it at all. And I knew uh, that I was slightly screwed up, and I didn't want to screw somebody else up, you know. I I I think I think raising a kid is a very important task, and you don't take it lightly. And the other part was I was always worried that if I did have a kid with somebody, the mother would leave me, and then she'd take the kid with her. And I wouldn't stand for that. you know. Yeah. So I didn't want to have to go through any of that. So I held off getting, having kids, held off having kids until finally, you know, it was a little late for me to have one. <clears throat> uh, not that I couldn't still have one, but I was just getting late in years. You know, I didn't want the kid to grow up with a dead father who died, you know, of old age. Um, I was 48. What? You were 48? I was 48. So I had apron. I had no kids before. Yeah. Same as what you're saying. I didn't, I, my, my real father had seven kids mm-hmm. and I saw all that going on. And, you know, he had two with this one, one with mine and one here, one there. My God, yeah. I, I did not want that. And I knew I wasn't ready. I was still working and having fun. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and and now you're a great father. It looks like. I mean, I I watch you with three daughters. Huh? Oh, your mic is too loud, Alan. Again? Oh and God. I just don't really understand about stopping the cycle. Yeah. So all the stuff, even when I was young with my stepfather, that had happened, and and you know, going through life, man, I I, I try to stop the cycle of of all that stuff with them. Yeah. 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 It's much better, Alan. You have three daughters, Brian? No. No, I have I have the one daughter, and then yeah, Tiffany has a daughter and a son from a previous marriage. Yeah. So, so in Hawaii, it looked like you had three daughters. The long-haired blonde one is that mm-hmm. is that your son? Oh, the blonde. Yeah, that's my son. Oh, no, I thought it was another no, girl. No, uh-huh. no, 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 no. Hey, that's that's the guy. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. And and let me ask you this question, Brian. How do you treat? the two kids that aren't yours. I mean, how, I know that you've got to be really fond of Adrian because it's your first kid. It's yours, you know? But Man, now you, I, it, have, I have a couple other friends that are like in the same situation. Man, yeah. it's so hard to, you know, with Adrian, I, I, I hold, I touch, I kiss, all that stuff. You know, the affection is there. The affection is a little bit harder with some of me, though. Yeah. Because even when we first start dating, you know, you just hear about all these bad stories of, stepfathers coming in and you know bad things happening and man i want to make sure that that's never a question is raised so sometimes i have my distance a little bit but yeah. i try as hard as i can to show the love all the time well, you know um uh well, just wait till adrian's a teenager mm-hmm. he'll be distant plenty. <laughs> yeah well the thing well, is man probably knows that's when i'm going to alan and phil I'm gonna do some shooting that's right <laughs> get rid of some stress yeah yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's also, I think, difficult from the standpoint that, uh, you know, you, you have to say, let these kids know, hey, you know, I don't expect you to accept me as your dad, but I am the husband of your mother, and I care about you, and I'm here for you, and I'm all the things that a, that a dad should be, but please, I'm not your dad. Don't think of me that way. I mean... Yeah, and, and it, I mean, it sounds like bad for me to say this, but it was a, sort of a good situation because... I know how the relationship was with Tiffany and her ex. Mm-hmm. And then he actually had cancer and he passed away about four years ago. Mm-hmm. So not a good situation, but you know, they really rely on me for a lot of stuff. And you know, he wasn't such a good father. So sort of those just, I'm here. What do you guys want to buy? You want an iPad and all those type of things, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but I never, if I don't discipline them, st- uh, Adrian, I will hit. Adrian, I will spank. I will yell and scream. Mm-hmm. The other ones I get a little harsh with, but I tickle them because that's worse than hitting them. Because I, I, I saw an interview with, I was watching one of these uh, comedians in cars getting coffee with Jerry Seinfeld, and he was doing uh, the thing with, a, uh, thing with Amy Schumer. Uh, who I have to admit, I, I've never been particularly fond of, but she is goddamn funny, okay? And, and he, they're talking about raising kids, and she says, well, I know, this is before she had one. She says, I don't know, I have nothing against, uh, he says, uh, I have nothing against spanking, especially now. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought that was a great line. But I, I, my father never hit me. My father yelled. 
Yeah, yeah. that's what my daddy said. Well, he my would look at me like he was Yeah. My father hit me once. Yeah, my father never hit me. No. You know, well, no, I, I never deserved. got out of belt or, you know, you're going to. I deserved it. You know, maybe maybe it, it, when I was baby, we maybe when I was a little toddler, maybe he gave me a little pat on the backside, you know, but nothing. I, he, never, he never spanked me, but he yelled. And yeah. I didn't want to get yelled at. I mean, that just, because when he was mad at me, I loved my father so much that when he was mad at me, uh, I, I felt very bad about that. I, I didn't want him to be mad at me or be disappointed in me. And, and, and so I, you know, where'd you go, Tony? Your mother's not around anymore. I had to get a drink. I got a little lightheaded. I got my fruit drink. I know, it's so quiet. Oh, God. You know, I, I tell them, are you there? I'm joking. But, but I tell them, you know, that they can have anything that they want. We can go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. We do whatever we want. But, you know, they have to have the school. They mm -hmm. have to get along mm -hmm. and, and do their chores. So other than that, I give them everything they want. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure. And I'm sure you're going to spoil Adrian all to hell. I mean. Tiffany's going to have to be the taskmaster in the family with Adrian, right? Yeah, it started already sometimes. It's bad. I mean, does she... She melts. When she looks at me and wants a snack or something small, I say, no, dinner time. Well, just one, Daddy. Oh. Just have a cookie. That's what do. <laughs> oh, she knows how to play you is what you're saying. I guess, yeah. yeah I guess. <laughs> hey, what happened to you last night? Do you have computer problems or what? I was mad at Alan. Couldn't take it anymore. No, just kidding. No, I, <laughs> that's what he said on the show last night. My friend yeah. said, hey, "Alan said you couldn't take it anymore." No, no, I tried. I didn't want to interrupt, and I had to go because Tiffany just came back from L.A. and we had to discuss stuff. So, okay, so just, good, good. Yeah. Well, I just, I just, I didn't wave. Me... But yeah, I was gonna... yeah, yeah. Um, I got a, I got a note today. I just want to, uh, want to read this to you. Uh, and again, it, it's about Alan. Uh, and I, I, I hate getting these kind of letters. I, I hate them because of what they're trying to do by their inference. Here's what the person says. If I were you, uh, well, he says, looking forward to another fun-filled hour with Al, where, of why Alan doesn't like the Black Lives Matter organization. Uh, not, if I were you, I'd get rid of Alan. Oh. Well, to begin with, this is not a bunch of people I hire, okay? <laughs> so I can't call them into all my office and say, Alan, this is your last You're day. You know. Wait wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean I'm not getting a check for this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I get, this, oh, I, get this, I get this money from the commercials that play at the beginning of the show, and I get maybe, yeah. I would say, if I had to estimate it, $200 a year. Mm. So if you want me to split wow. it among you guys, I'll be happy to. <laughs> yeah. Can't buy a Rolex and in that. that case, if I have to split it among the, the bunch of you, Alan, you're fired. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, get more money now. Yeah. So, so if ready. this person's listening right now, mm -hmm. we all have opinions. I have no problem with... <clears throat> I don't like Black Lives Matter. But I, I, I do believe that the police uh, overstep their bounds with blacks a lot in this country. And, um, you know, and I think that I'm entitled to like what I want to like, you know. And, I yeah. just, you know, nobody really kicked me in the teeth. I was expecting to get, you know, all kinds of stuff yesterday from the crowd here. I, I you know, I can, because I don't like Black Lives Matter doesn't mean I'm a racist. I have black friends. I mean, I, come on, this is bullshit. Well, I, I, listen to, I listen to the show. How, how did, how did, wait a minute. How, oh, yeah, hold, yeah. What were you going to say, Brian? Oh, I was going to say really quick, I, well, that, and I hope I say it right, but they say that no lives can matter if black lives don't matter. You know, and, and I think that that's one of the things that they're saying uh, underlying, you know, I know you said like bad also or something like that, but but I just really think that every, but every, every life should matter. And if they don't, then you know, no lives matter. And that's, I think, really what they're trying to say. Well, uh, Charlie, uh, uh, Alan said something. How do you feel when you hear somebody say, I have friends, my best friends are black. So I, oh, no, I, 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 have, that far. I, I have black friends. I wouldn't sounds like that something far. George Wallace would say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That came out no, wrong. I... <laughs> 
I, you know, I think if somebody really does have black friends, they don't need to say anything about yeah. it. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry I said it. Yeah. No, I don't care. You know, it doesn't bother me that you don't agree with me 100%, Alan. You know, I, I can accept that. I, you see, I never, I never defend <laughs> uh, that I'm not a racist, okay? Uh, because uh, I may well be and not know it, you know? I mean... Uh, I yeah, I, I I think a lot of people assume, mm -hmm. maybe not in this group, but a lot of people assume that all cops, all white cops are racists based on the, the few bad apples that are out there. And those bad apples should not be cops as far as I'm concerned. You know, uh, what happens if it wasn't a black man, and it was a gay man or or somebody from New York. It's all the same thing to me. I yeah, mean, you, know, you treat everybody like a human being, like you'd want to be treated. So yeah, or a gay man from New York. I like what he said there. What? <laughs> what? 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 Jeff? He's, what he just said. He says, "Well, I don't like New Yorkers." It's really. <laughs> <laughs> there we go again. <laughs> Not what I said. That's kind of what Brian said. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. per personally, I hate Jews. So, you know, yeah. I mean. It's... Well, then three of us are in trouble. I think Charlie <laughs> might be Jewish, too. We'll make him an honorary Jew. How's that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Tell uh, him my best friends are Jews. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Robert. Robert That's has very a, good. Robert with has day. a hand up. With all due respect, people that say, um, all lives matter. It, to me, it sounds whiny. And I'll I'll give you an example. When there were the explosions in Boston for the marathon, people mm -hmm. took to wearing T-shirts that said "Boston Strong." Well, you didn't hear St. Louis come about saying, "Well, we're strong too." <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, but we but we do do in wait, New York. We, we do. So all these t cities did adopt the term. Like in New York, Boston we have New York strong. strong. Like we understood that they needed our help. They needed our submit our yeah. sort of psychic support. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. And to me, I don't know, complaining or all lives matter to me sounds just as whiny. <clears throat> you know, like you, you, come on, can't you just pitch in and understand that these folks I, I'll tell you though, I the only thing that bothers me is the emphasis on black black stuff you know and the way blacks are being dealt with in america when the hispanics have been dealt with in exactly the same way the uh, chinese you get it now too now. Chi well, oh, yeah yeah, yeah not, the chinese. Not, not as bad as the blacks though yeah, in this you, you, don't you don't think you don't think that the hispanics were being uh, uh or no. you know what they call them now the latinx line. latinx uh, which I used well. to blow my nose in. I don't know what it is. I use Latinx. No, a Latinx, they use that now because uh, you can't say uh, Latin because uh, <coughs> Latino because that's male. Really? And you can't say but Latina because Latin that's female. So Latinx I, is now the new proper. Um, you have to keep up with this stuff. Otherwise, <laughs> you're a racist, okay? I think somebody oh, misspelled. They were trying to spell Kleenex yeah. with a K. Well, that was a joke I was making Most earlier. Of my, my Hispanic I'm friends hate the term Latinx. Yeah. Yeah. Who's, but that's rarely, it's awfully new. I just saw it for the first time a few weeks ago. And I, I went, what I the hell is Latinx? Hmm? I never understood why only people who speak Spanish are considered Latino, where Italians and French also speak languages which derive from Latin. So yeah. why I'm, I'm of a Italian American descent. Why aren't I a Latino in that sense? I you are a Latino. I never you are. Never You're, got hey, that. Turn your mic You're not down. Hispanic. Ray, Ray, Latino. Ray, turn your mic down or move it okay. away. It's too loud. I, I mean, I don't want to be whatever this is, but it always puzzled me why we focus only on Spanish speakers as being Latino. Well, uh, I'll tell you, uh, it, it's funny. I, uh, 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 what's his name? Lopez, uh, the, uh, the comedian. Uh, George. George Lopez. Uh, and I were George talking Lopez. about this on the air one day. And he didn't like the use of the term Hispanic. He said... Where is Hispaniola? 
That is true. Where is it? Where yeah. is it? Why, where did Hispanic come from? He says, <laughs> he says I'm proud to say it's it. Dominican Republic and Haiti and Dominican you know, Republic are the island of Hispaniola. Yeah, well, well in he any knows. event, he said, I'm not Hispanic. I'm a Mexican. Okay? And I sometimes get confused with somebody from Spain who's it's Spanish. To the you know. He's going to lump everybody together. Well, no, but he, he did not like the term Hispanic. He thought the it was... Mantex. Oh, but you thing. know, I mean, I, 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 just send me the memo, and I'll call you whatever you want to be called. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, because I people. want to respect you, so just send me the memo. But please, don't leave me out of the loop and then blame me for being Who a racist. Who here like rice and beans? Raise your hand. Okay, yeah. those are the ones, Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm joking. I that. Yeah. Oh, uh, the rest of this <laughs> note, by the way, you want me to read the rest of it? Oh, sure. uh, failing that, I'd be drawing into the conversation those who, unlike Alan or Phil before <laughs> Alan, uh, for whatever reason, hang back. They, like Josh, for example, have a lot to say. Uh, that's why I always go to Josh a lot, because he is in any group very resident, resident to, uh, uh, to just speak out. In fact, uh, I do something with uh, Kevin and he and Patrick on Saturday, where we just get together as a bunch of friends and talk on on uh, Zoom, and even there, he's re he's reticent to just talk a lot. Okay, so because and once he does, by the way, he talks up a storm. Okay, but it, it he he's very he's very quiet and laid back. Uh, but anyway. Uh, uh, you do turn to them and try to get them to talk, but in my opinion, you should do much more than you do. You should do it every five minutes, not a couple of times a show. Thanks for listening. Well, uh, massive prick, uh, the uh, problem here is is that I have what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people here right now on this program. And uh, if I go to every one of them every five minutes, none of the others would have time to talk. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just impossible. Like, and some people lay back. Jeff joins in when he wants to. He just, he basically likes being here. It's like being with old friends, right? And Scott is kind of new to this. And he, 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 he you know, he, he, I, I try to get him to jump in when I see he hasn't for a while. But then again, I'm mistaken for Scott Boddicker, so I don't pay any attention no. to him. Uh, There's no drink in front of me. My hair is short. Yeah. <laughs> still I, I, don't see, I don't see that at all. I see a little bit. I, when I saw him on, was it Monday? Yeah. yeah. I looked at him like, I can see why you say that. Yeah, yeah, hey, you yeah. need a wig. You need a wig. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, well, Charlie, <laughs> you're almost got a lot on the, uh, what, the other show after ours. Yeah. And uh, you, uh, uh, he does look like Scott, doesn't he? Yeah, I didn't think so at first, but... Last week when I was looking at Scott after you mentioned that, yeah, I, I yeah. can see the resemblance. It's just that Scott has the long hair now. But his hair was oh, he, 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 his long. hair's down to he here now. Yeah, I yeah, saw him on your yeah. thing. Yeah. I was yeah. cooking. I didn't know I'm that was jealous. yours. Yeah. So I'm jealous. What do you mean you're jealous? Why are you jealous? Long hair, you know? Come on. I used to have hair down to here. Yeah. And if I, I had it now, then that would really be an ugly look. You know? Wow. Uh, yeah. I've always hated these people that grew their hair. I, I had a, a Robert Schimmel, who's a comedian, uh, said to me when I first started really losing my hair. I mean, I was always been losing it to a certain extent. But he said, just cut it off. Because I was, I was holding on to everything I could, you know. And, he, and I was wearing it long on the sides. And he said, cut it all off. And I said, why? He says, I call it preemptive baldness. You don't look as bald when you cut it all off. Yeah. You look trendy. And the reason I've decided now not to wear a hat anymore is because I don't want to be one of those people who wears a hat because they're bald. I'll just cut it nice and short and look like Charlie Brown, for Christ's sake. You know? <laughs> Good grief. Of course, I don't wear a hat. Hat. I've worn a hat since I was a kid. It's just a habit. Well, no, I mean, I, you know, I'll wear a hat when I'm out. Because the reason why guys who are bald wear hats when they're outdoors is because we don't have hair to cover this, our head from the sun. And That's if we right. don't wear a cap, we're going to get a I, bad sunburn up I, there. I wear a ball cap when I'm in a swimming pool. Yeah. Because otherwise my head will get burnt. 
Anyway, uh, 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 John Cummings uh, uh, says, thanks for listening. Yeah. Okay. You know. Fuck you. Well, you know, I don't feel that, uh, I, I, you know, I don't find, I don't think, do any of you guys find Alan an inhibitor to your joining in? Not at all. Is this a secret ballot? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. But he must have had a hard time with that last name growing up. What? Uh, Cummings? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why he's upset. No, yeah. I think he's upset because he ended up in your coffee last night when you were starting oh. to talk. To, when you were starting to talk to <laughs> Phil, you said it looked like you just jerked off in the with the new creamer or something like that. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I, I got new creamer now and I'm fine. Okay, good. Hey, did anybody see the article in the Times this morning about um, the Chauvin case and how rare it is for a, a police officer to be actually charged with a murder rap? Yep. Yeah. Seven since 2005. Wow. And they estimate that your chances or the chances of a cop being uh, convicted of murder are one in 2,000 cases. Wow, that high. Yeah. Wow. And, and these ones who were charged with murder, you say, were they were they found innocent or were they found no, guilty? No, guilty. No, these are the ones that were actually found guilty of murder, seven since the year 2005. So you you know, uh, let me ask you this, Alan, you, because you, you, you know, you went through police academy, right? I did. <laughs> you took, the, you took that uh, two hour shooting saw course, the movie. right? That's <laughs> right. I saw the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, you went through the police academy and they taught you how to shoot for two, for, for two hours, I think is what somebody said the other day about police. And uh, That's it. you learned all the stuff. But at any point, did they ever say to you, you know, if you uh, if you unreasonably kill a perpetrator, uh, you could be tried for murder? Did they ever say that to you? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Nope. Oh, wow. Not not only that, you're responsible for every bullet that leaves your gun. If you miss the intended target and kill somebody else, you're responsible for that too. Wow. Not only as a police officer, but I think anybody's responsible. Now, where did you go to the police academy? What city? Uh, in Dublin, California. Yeah. Alameda County Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. Were they good? I don't know. I didn't have any comparisons first time. Yeah. I, I thought it was okay. It was in the middle of the summer. It was 100 degrees outside every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, yeah, you know, when I was 21, high school was, jog, you know, we would we would jog in high school for a half hour, but on a hot day, we wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, in the academy, we ran ten miles up hills, down hills. Didn't yeah. matter what the temperature was. Yeah. So yeah, I was in the best shape of my life at, at that point. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and, and Robert, I heard also that you know what is the with all those cases, how many of their bosses or their superiors actually you know went against him? Yes. And that's even more rare. I don't know if that's Not ever happened. Rare. Yeah. Yeah. Very rare. Very yeah. rare. So. The, the point of the article, by the way, wasn't to trash police officers. What they were doing was they were showing that what you've just witnessed is actually a rare event, you know, in the American scheme of things, that more often than not, if a police officer is convicted and found guilty, it's a plea down to a lesser charge, that actually being nailed with murder Again, seven times in the past 16 years. So the so the, the, the point of this story is if you want to kill somebody, become a police officer. There you go. Yeah, you might you got a shot. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I saw this clip today and I can't remember who the congresswoman was, but she was giving a speech in Congress uh, about police and how we should support our police, and we should give them our support. And I, I don't know the rest of what she was saying, but all of a sudden, this Jim Jordan. Yeah. Did, did you see this? Yeah. The, explain it to me, because I just saw it all the peripherally out of the side of my eye. What was it? He was, he, what was, what was the, the fight they, about? They, they, it was, I think there was, it was some kind of a, um, 
a committee where uh, Nate, uh, the guy from Nader was chairing it, mm -hmm. and she, she's an ex-cop. Yeah. And so she was, she was, um, she was just saying, you know, uh, we should uh, support the police and the Republicans. They only want to, you know, support the police when it's convenient for them. And uh, Jordan interrupted her, and she was not going to. She goes, I got the floor, Jordan. You know, back and off. And he wouldn't Stop shut her. up. He wouldn't yeah. shut up. Is this the guy? Is this the guy that was uh, Jordan that was giving uh, Fauci a hard yep. time a week yep. ago? Yeah, yep. same yeah. guy. Yeah, same guy. This is a what guy a who loser. thinks who who's got to do this kind of thing because he feels the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yeah, you know, or the bullet. Well, we can only hope. No, excuse me, I'm not going to say that. Um, you know, I mean, I, this guy is just offensive to me on every level. Just yep. offensive. And and doesn't he own a jacket? By the way, <laughs> no, apparently not. I no. never see this guy wear. No, a jacket. he doesn't wear a jacket because he's working. Oh, I <laughs> he's see. He's working. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think Maxine Waters told him to shut up, his... right? Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. she? Yeah. When, when did she tell him to shut up? Today? When yeah. he was oh. hounding Fauci. Oh, when he was hounding yeah. Fauci. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about the Maxine Waters situation? Who cares what she says? I'm so glad the judge didn't do anything about that. Well, no I mean, he, he made a statement before the end of the trial. Yeah, no, but I'm glad it. that he didn't allow to declare a mistrial. I mean, right, it's not right. going to, the jury's not going to care what Maxine Waters says. Well, no. uh, they might be affected by what she says, yes. The, not by Maxine Waters herself, but by what she had to say. That's why uh -huh. you don't go into a crowd like this before the, the verdict has come in or whatever. I mean, Biden did it, and I'm, I'm kind of down on Biden for having they, done it. They, they, the jury was sequestered when they both... That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. The trial wasn't over. Yeah. You know, and you just go, you know, I have my opinion about this, and I'll let you know what it is, but right now the trial isn't over, and when it's finished and the verdict has come in, I will then let you know how I feel. Uh, but if last night, let's say that he was found not guilty somehow, all right? After what... Tr what uh, uh, What's his name said? Uh, what, uh, what Biden said? Yeah, what's his name? But after what Biden said, uh, if there was a riot, yeah. it could be blamed on him, just like the riot in Washington was blamed on Trump. Yeah, because he he could have been night. caused said all oh, the cause for these riots was uh, was Biden. You know. No, I yeah, yeah so, I agree. Uh, I don't think they should have said anything. No. I just I just feel that I, the judge was right not to allow a mistrial. But, yeah, that, that was wrong for them to say anything like that. It was really a, really out of line. Well, you know, Biden, I was shocked. I was listening to the show last night, and I heard you say that. And, and when I heard that during the day, you know, if you really think about it, Biden has to be much more mature, too. How, first of all, you have to have faith in the jury. I know people are going to say that it doesn't always work out the way, but you don't want to put any undue pressure on them. And like you said, say this doesn't come out the way it is, it almost looks like Biden is... To me, Biden looked very unprofessional. He, yeah, that really, was, that was, that that was his most unprofessional moment, I think, since he took office. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, and, and quite frankly, I mean, I'm happy with what he's doing. You know, although uh, what if uh, did you anybody see the interview with Trump and Hannity? No, I can't stand. And he like got that. into you... why Biden looks like he's losing it because he's an old man. He says, I know people that age, but they don't fall fall down the stairs three times in a row and blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. Did you, did you, you know. notice that Hannity's lips kind of matched Donald Trump's butthole? Um, yeah. No, because I, I didn't notice uh, Donald Trump's butthole. I just can't, oh, well. can't, uh, can't, can't, my eyes are always frozen on that haircut. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know what the funniest thing was? Time. Hmm? The, the, you know, the funniest thing was uh, when, uh, he, when Trump goes, oh, you know, I talked to the uh, governor of um, Texas, and he told me that we haven't had as much support for the Republicans since Reconstruction. And Trump goes, you're talking about the Civil War. <laughs> like, like, you know, and I said, I said, you must be talking about the Civil War. Like, oh, yeah, that Reconstruction. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, he's so fucking stupid. Somebody, somebody today among my friends put up a meme on Facebook that said, um, Monday, mass shooting. 
Tuesday, mass shooting. Wednesday, mass shooting. Thursday, mass shooting. Friday, mass shooting. Saturday, mass shooting. Sunday, Republicans attempt to keep transgender athletes from competing in high school sports. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You know, like, <laughs> Hello. Well, well, I don't know what we what we're going to do about the mass shootings, but it's getting a little out of hand. Yeah, you know, something's got to be done. You know, and and I don't I I don't know what the answer is. Of course, my answer is fuck guns, get rid of them. Okay, uh, but I know that mine is not a popular opinion, nor is it an opinion which uh, what he shared a file in the meeting. What is this, Ray? <laughs> Why are you doing that, Ray? It it only shows up here on the page, and then it, it's annoying. He quit. Well, he I, quit. It, it, he can't take it anymore. I don't think Alex. You're giving him too much of a hard time. He's, he's just like that. We Brian. only have thirty countries around the world that have done something about mass shootings, and they don't have them anymore. Yeah, we yeah. can try and do one what one of those countries did. What yeah. is it? Oh, the Republicans won't. Yeah. So, so Australia had a lot of mass shootings in yep. New Zealand, and they took the guns away from everybody. Or highly, res- I have a friend of mine that's a uh, that lives in Australia, but in any case, he said they're highly restricted now. Um, but the crime rate went way up because the people that still had guns were the bad guys. The bad, uh, I love I love this notion of bad guys. I love this notion. Oh, and, and, but there's some I, I want to go right? out and meet one. Do they have signs? Does it say bad guy? You know, like, <laughs> bad guy, yeah. is it like Wiley C. Coyote? You know, it, well, it, it, you know, you could say, you know, if it's the guy that's shooting if you, a gun it, or beating well, somebody what do up they on say the street. When, yeah. What do they say guy. when you're when you're banning guns? Mm. What's the whole story with lying about that? If you ban guns, only the bad guys, will, the have bad guns. guys will have yeah. guns. Well, my, my feeling is if you allow so. if you allow people to have guns, only uh, you, good guys will shoot people. You know, I mean, it. it, oh. it, 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 it people well, are irresponsible with guns, and they serve no purpose. You well, know. Did you hear what the, uh, the the guy from the NRA, Way, Way, uh, Wayne Lapierre, well, or whatever? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, he, he, he was on some yacht and he goes, this is the only place I can find in America where I'm safe. And some, some uh, columnist on the Washington Post was saying, oh, so now he's suggesting that we all uh, buy a yeah. yacht for everybody in America so he can be <laughs> safe on their yachts. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't understand it. Uh, I, I, just, I just find no reason for guns. Hi, Ray. Back again, huh? Don't don't right. ch- don't chat, by the way, because that comes up in the picture and it uh, it, it doesn't look good. Uh, I was trying to drag a file to the desktop, and somehow it went on the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, and I had all your passwords on. Actually, what I what I should yeah. do, and I'm going to do it, is that. I should um, probably deactivate chat. That would be I good. I post yeah. on the chat all the time. It doesn't show up. No, no, no. That, that's the chat on the. Um, no, this is the chat on <clears> Zoom. <throat> there is oh, a, yeah, there is a chat that. on Zoom. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, hey, Ray, look at look at your uh, Facebook Messenger that Phil sent you a message. Oh no, no, it's it's good. <laughs> oh okay, okay, right, it's good. Just look at it. Okay. What is so Phil, what happens on the show? Is Phil always lurking in the background or something? Well, he watches the show. I know he watches, watches it, but show. is he He's lurking? Like is he, he got lurking bigger. about? I was watching the last night. Yeah. All these people that are picking on me always include Phil's name in there. Yeah, why is that? Because you're nothing like Phil. No. No. To, begin, to begin with, you're a, you're a liberal. You're not a, a, right, a right winger. In fact, I was thinking just to make this show interesting, I'd become a Republican. <laughs> can you pass that off here? I wonder if you could do it. Huh? I wonder if you could sell that. You might be. Able I'd be good at it for yeah, about five minutes. Bef- I, Hannity be, would want to get on the show. I'd be good at it for about five minutes until I couldn't stand myself any longer. You know, um, I tried it once. I think maybe I tried it at Sirius XM one day. I went on the air and just pretended like I was a right winger. And I could only do it for about 15, 20 minutes, and I couldn't, I couldn't make, keep it up. I couldn't keep doing it. it was, it's too difficult to be a, 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 you know, a right winger, a, a, a reptard, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Libtard. 
Retard. Retards. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so snowflake. Like, yeah. Remember Ed Schultz? Oh yeah, yeah I remember Ed Schultz. Ed Schultz was a conservative radio guy and suddenly switched. Yeah, he was an asshole. It was more for marketing. That's how he figured out to make more money, or he, he could make more money that way. So some people have done it. Mm -hmm. Now, well, I knew, I knew, I, I, of course, I worked. He's been liberal, and all of a sudden, starts spouting this conservative crap, and they make a fortune. I, I worked, yeah. I worked with uh, uh, Ed Schultz, yeah, and uh, a major asshole, major asshole. Mm. Um, and uh, when he died, I didn't feel bad. Uh, okay, is that the same guy who was Secretary of State? Or oh no, 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 no. no. Oh, no. No, that was, okay. uh, was George a, Schultz. That was George Schultz. Schultz. Oh, okay. yeah. He was a political commentator on. So, uh, so Trump flipped. I mean, you know, he's, yeah, but, he's a life. Trump oh, was yeah. a lifelong Democrat. Yeah, but Trump uh, would no. Trump couldn't define conservative or liberal. Yeah. Come on, that's true. Trump is just and Trump. Trump was him. it politically. Trump was a trumpet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess we could call him. He was for himself. He, he was for no. anything that would get him sure. ahead and keep him yeah. five steps ahead of the col bill collectors. Yeah. Right? And now That's he's not five true. steps ahead of the bill collectors. And according to Sean Hannity, he says he's working harder than he's ever worked. Sure. you yeah, got to keep those guys away. You know. <laughs> but now he has no, uh, he has no uh, cover. You know? Well, and and he's street. fair game for anybody who wants to come after him. Yeah. And the only way he raises money is by telling his people to send him millions of dollars because and he needs it to fight the good fight. But that's the only place money's coming in for him. So, you know. And I guess he gets a pension, doesn't he? Don't all ex-presidents get a pension? $400,000 a year. That's what they make being president. Right, oh, and they get thought, that for the rest of their life. I get that. Yeah, they get it for the rest of their life, plus Secret Service protection. So yeah, and plus a million dollars in, in business expenses every year. Really? Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, yeah. it's a travel. Uh, uh, this is oh. uh, uh, we're starting to we're, we've got a lot of presidents out there that are getting you know protection. Yeah, but Jimmy Carter builds houses for poor people with his. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But I mean, still, I mean, the fact that we ha we're supporting these many live presidents, we can only hope they start dying off, so we don't have to spend the money. Starting know? with the last one. Starting with the <laughs> last allowed, one. They're not allowed to drive Both a car, though. Yeah, I, 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 what was it? Um, it was uh, it was Seinfeld. Seinfeld, well, Seinfeld took Obama, remember? It, with Obama, the, and he let yeah. him get behind the wheel of a, of the car because they were yeah, doing, but, you know, comedians. That was my favorite one. Yeah. But the, the, the car's presidents getting coffee. I'm allowed to drive. Right? Uh, presidents it, aren't allowed to drive after he that. He says, I haven't and driven in years. But he got <laughs> behind the wheel of the car, and he was thrilled. You know? But are they allowed to drive when they're no longer president? No? Not allowed to drive. That's why yeah. I, I wasn't going to be president. I said no. I, I, I'm going <laughs> to Oh, no. That's every reason for me to be president. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah Do they also hire people to carry you places? Is, it, is that a possibility? Alan, you don't drive at all. <laughs> Alan? You don't drive, Alan. I mean, okay. Alex. You mean me? Yeah. Yeah, no. Alan. Alex. Alex. You look sorry, so much that. alike. I'm we Alex. have gray hair, beard. Yeah. But I'm the one not wearing the <laughs> cap okay, anymore. The oh. Without yeah, the hat, you know, I don't By know. the way, how do I look without the hat? Is it okay? Fine. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, full moon, moon. It looks beautiful every night. <laughs> oh, you look like Telly Savalas with a beard. Yeah, right. I'll start eating yeah, lollipops right. on the show. He's dead though. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, let me see here. So uh, anyway, uh, Jim Jordan is a piece of work. I'm just oh, that guy's just awful. Sick of him. And uh, what else did I see? Was there something? Anything else? Nah. Um, the Anglo-Saxon. Uh, caucus is an oh. interesting, right? Oh, yeah, well, that's. Did you hear about the our our uh, the way that we come up with a jury has nothing to do with Anglo-Saxon tradition. It actually comes from Islamic law in the ninth century. Yeah, really. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, the idea of twelve men and twelve women. Yeah. 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 Wow. I mean, they even had twelve women there, or was it just twelve men? men? But twelve men. Islamic Islamic law, yeah, from the from the ninth century, and we adopted it because there was some king who was friends with some Islamic leader somewhere. I, I don't know the details, but 
It has nothing to do with Anglo-Saxon tradition. Hmm. And, and who was saying it was Anglo-Saxon tradition? Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the guy on C- uh, Fox. Oh, one Sh- of the- Hannity. Sean Hannity? No, the Tucker other Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson. Oh, Tucker Carlson. Tucker uh, Carlson. Yeah. Guys. Who, by the way, mm-hmm. last week said that... At the uh, government knows that all the vaccines cause diseases, but they're not going to tell us. Yeah. Oh, sh- yeah. Hey, you Who know what? That? I, I see in the news today that they're that they got more vaccine than appointments across the country. That's because that all mean, these idiot Texans won't get the vaccine. Right. It's well, it, it, other places too, Charlie, and we'll never get to herd immunity, and that means we'll get mutations. And the mutations will, at some point, override the vaccine. But wait a minute! Don't we have don't we have some states that have already achieved herd immunity because everybody went and got the shots? I know that. I'll tell you where they do have herd immunity: Israel. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Because I mean, I was That's because everybody's there. gotten the shot. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Rather, I, Jews, Jews. Taiwan. I just Australia. I just don't understand it. I mean, it's it's completely it's just so anti-science. You know, I mean, yep. what it's gonna wow. it's gonna fuck with your DNA. What do you mean, you moron? Your DNA's already been fucked up. Yeah. That's you right. Know, that's what inbreeding <laughs> yeah. causes. It should be an improvement. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I that and uh, what was the other one that I heard? Um, I don't get it. It causes all kinds of things. Yeah. Don't you find it odd that people are willing to risk their lives for political yeah. reasons? Well, I it's stupidity. That's so weird. You know, and, 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 and quite frankly, I hope they catch COVID and die. Okay, I mean, I I really do. I think they should be they should have to pay for their stupidity. I mean, it's almost like a kid going to school. When I had to go to school, you had to get the measles shot. You had to get all these shots. Yeah, well, kids yeah. kids have yeah. to get get shots. You know. Can we just force them to get shots? I bet you could have companies. Oh, no, here's, here's what we do. Here's what we do. Here's what we do. We don't p- p- penalize them in the usual way. You don't get a shot. Mm. Okay. You don't get a shot. Um, you don't get a card. You don't have a card. You can't get into a restaurant. You can't mm-hmm. get into a movie theater. You can't get into a sports event. You can't get into a, you know, you can't get into any of these places. Can't yeah. go You're an country. outcast yeah. from society yeah. because there's no place you can get into without your card being filled out. Right. No fly list. Uh, they put them yeah. on that. Yep. You can't renew yep. your passport. Right. Now, no before before we go tonight, I want to ask Trucker Steve because he hasn't talked much tonight. Last night he was very good at joining in. Tonight he's been... He and his dog, dog have been, is, his dog has been acting like a little nipper, you know, looking into the, into the thing. He's uh, not used to seeing you without a hat, the dog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dog scared the shit but out anyway, of the dog. Anyway, uh, uh, Steve, tell us where you are tonight. Steve? Froze. Froze, froze now. Uh, Steve, planet. did you hear us? Steve, where where are you tonight? Oh, you... Computer froze right up. What was that? And where are you tonight? Oh, in Fernley, Nevada. Oh, so you're going back now. Yeah, I'm on my way home. And where is Fernley, did you say? Uh, in it's Nevada. about 20 miles east of uh, Sparks. Oh, okay. I know where Sparks yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Sparks is right you? outside of Reno. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. yeah. And Why uh, did you stop in Fernley? Why did you stop in Reno? Why don't you go to the Moonlight uh, Ranch? There's no fly J in Reno. Hey, this oh. guy is driving a truck for money, okay? Right, yeah. You know. Don't ask questions, Larkin. Come on. Yeah. yeah also, really. Look at, look, at, look at that nice cab he's got there. He can sleep in there. He can do the whole thing. He doesn't have to stay in Sparks, you know. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, time's up. Got to go. <laughs> Jeff, thank you. Thank you, uh, Scott, like having you here tonight. Trucker Steve, always good to have you. Charlie Wallace, Robert Natali, Tony Magno. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a man who really misses his mother. And uh, and, and as well you should, you know. Now when I'm sleeping late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, John Larkin, thank you. Alan, thank you for joining us. Brian Neary, good to have you back. And uh, Ray Renati, thank you. I always appreciate your 
for you coming down, being part of the show. Good to see you, Ray. Yeah. Come on, see you all. Everybody, give a big yeah. wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the citizens panel for tonight. They're through. They're gone. That's about it. That's all she wrote. We'll see you again. Well, uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection mo over most of these same stations. And uh, then uh, let's see here. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, we'll be back again at uh, 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, please wear a mask, will you? And be safe out there and get a needle in your arm. And make sure it's not heroin. Okay. Good night, everybody.